We have. Time. We actually have uh, so somebody with us. Where so many workers are losing their jobs. Okay, yes. I'm done now. We can go to Jenna. Uh, Jenna Bush <laughs> is awaiting us right now. Sorry, Jenna. It's okay. Jenna knows all about these primaries and things. <laughs> uh, first twin daughter, or whatever we call Jenna. First of all, Jenna, you ha you have written a book called Anna. You've been doing the press thing. You've been doing interview after interview after yes. interview. Yes. How do you feel? Are there any surprises for you in this whole thing that you're doing? No, I mean, it's been really great. I'm, I'm traveling to different high schools throughout the United States and talking with teenagers and students about Anna and, and the other kids I met in Latin America. And so far, it's been really inspiring. And and, and not unpleasant. I mean, the, the, well, we'll change all that. No, we're not going to change all <laughs> Don't change it, please. We, we will right. not change okay. it. We will not. She obviously hasn't people, seen the show. People have been nice, and they're not attacking your dad or his policies to you. Yeah, no, I mean, everybody realizes that this is about honest story and what I've learned in Latin America. Yeah, now What you, did you learn? It, well, I met with my job. I worked for UNICEF, which is an amazing organization that works in over 150 countries. And my job was to meet with teenagers who were living in exclusion, who were living in um, extreme poverty or living with HIV and write their stories, listen to their stories and write them for UNICEF. And so, I mean, I obviously learned so much from these kids. I learned from Anna in particular who has lived an extremely difficult life. I learned um, to live each day to its fullest. Uh, excuse me, Jenny. There's a word you used earlier in the interview about exclusion. Can you explain what that yes. is? Well, a lot of the kids I met, I mean, exclusion is a broad term, obviously, but the kids I met were living in extreme poverty. They didn't have access to medical care or education, schooling. Um, they were living with HIV. And, and so um, they were living uh, outside of, of um, society's embrace. Mm -hmm. I and think doing, I'm sorry, doing any kind of missionary work, I think, really changes a person. And you and your sister had a little bit, I mean, you guys weren't Paris Hilton, but you had a little bit of a <laughs> reputation Jeez. as party girls. Do you think this changed you? Well, no. I mean, I think people had that image of us because they didn't know really what we were up to because we wanted to keep private. But of course, you know, so it didn't change my personality necessarily. But I taught for two years after um, the University of Texas after graduating and then went on to Latin America. And, and um, you know, of course, I've grown up. It's been seven years since people <laughs> had that image of me. Um, but, yeah, I mean, listening to their stories was it was incredible. And Je it did Jenna, when me. you see this, when you not only listen to their stories, but you get involved and you write about it mm -hmm. as well, does it change how you look, you're thinking about how government should run in the United States and elsewhere to help these people? Why should these people be in these situations? Yeah, I mean, I think the United States government does try to help. I went to Africa this this summer um, with my mom, and I met a lot of um, people who's who are getting assistance from the United States government and, and um, to help them get the medicine they need to stay to stay healthy. But um, definitely, and I think the key is education. And um, for instance, with Anna, Anna's mother didn't have the education to know what to do to keep her baby Anna safe. So Anna inherited HIV from her mom, but Anna, with education in Latin America, has taken the proper ARVs, and her baby Beatriz is most likely HIV negative. So there wow. is a positive light to all of this. Does it ever make you feel like you, not just you in particular, but you are too privileged in this world? Well, um, you know, I, I know I'm very fortunate, and I have, um, but I, I think that we can all give back in some ways, mm. and I hope that I'm doing that by teaching and, and by writing this book. I know you and your mom are writing a book together, too, but yes. I want to ask you a question about your dad. How did he react when you said, I'm getting married? <sighs> well, Henry told him first. My fiancé asked him first if it was okay for him to ask me. And, and, and so when he, he goes to the president and officially asks for your hand in marriage, that's got to that be your dad. <laughs> I, I mean, I know he, he had worked for your dad and for the party, but still that's got to be intimidating. No, well, he hadn't. I mean, he hasn't worked for my dad in a long time, but he... No, I mean, I think he would do that to anybody who was marrying. Mm -hmm. Just and do, yeah, do any dads really say no anymore? I'm just curious. Yeah, I, have yeah, I don't know. That's yeah. the thing. I don't know my, if my dad would have said no. Yeah. It's a get, nice anyway. thing because you're in love and he wants you to be happy. Did he, get exactly. down on, did he get down on his knee when he spoke to the president? <laughs> hey, Jenna, you once went skydiving with my sister. I have to tell you a funny oh, story. I what? You once went skydiving, I think, oh, with my, really? my sister. Yeah. Did you ever go to Paris, California here, and you jumped out of an airplane yes, with your sister? Yes, I did. You were on the plane with my sister. And oh, my, my gosh, how funny. Yeah, and she. I guess one of you asked her, like, because my sister's got, I think, four, 450 yeah. jumps under her. And you guys, it was your first jump. And so then um, she said, 
God, there was a lot of hubbub when we landed, and there were these men running out. She had no idea. She's Canadian. She had no idea who you guys were, but that you were very cool and very sweet. Well, thank you. We were very nervous jumping <laughs> on the plane, I have to tell you. <laughs> I guess so. All right, uh, Jenna, you have to go because you have 23,000 other interviews. You're very charming. <laughs> yes. The thank book you, Jenna. is thank called you so much Honest for Story. Me. Nice to thank see you, Jenna. Thanks. Thanks. Honest Mom. Story. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know what comes out of all of this? When they were the first daughters, and we all want Paris Hilton coverage over everything in our stupid world now, all we ever got to know about them were the bad moments that they had. But you know what? You know? It's funny. I was thinking of their bad moments. They did what any other girl. I went to college. Yeah. I was 20. Yeah, you played drinking games. Yeah, but you're the president's daughter, so and everyone can had a, I don't think they were wildly crazy or No, no. What saying, what my point is, they have, she had an illegal ID card, underage she, card. Don't we all? Yeah. What I'm saying is, all we knew about them was that. That, of we, course. We knew five minutes out of their lives. They're probably lives doing really good what, things, but nobody wants to focus on that stuff because it's boring. Being as normal as she can. Doing but now, work is, is no, no, no. Back then, boring. I'm saying. Back yeah. then, no, they're no, probably doing really yeah. good things, yeah. but nobody cared. Well, they were college kids back then.